What is up guys, it's Migo Tech, Michael Goffin here with another video. Um, so I know a lot of you guys have been wondering sort of what classes to take and what, what things you can learn to become a better engineer. I wanted to give a bit of a breakdown about my CS degree and what it took to get there. A couple forewarnings. If you're planning on doing a CS degree, you know, there's going to be times when it's pretty difficult, especially if you've never done any programming before. The start is always the hardest part. It's just once you overcome that initial hump, then I feel it becomes easier and easier. A couple things I would also keep in mind. Your grades aren't everything. Really, if you want to become a great software engineer, it's not about your grades. It's about what you do, what you build, and how far that ends up going. So don't focus on your grades. Don't obsess over them. Here are my transcripts right here. I'm just going to go through the what classes I've taken, what things really helped me, see what things might have helped you. One forewarning, I didn't graduate in four years, I ended up graduating in three years. And that was because of a lot of AP credits, as well as taking extra classes. It really depends on what your goals are, and for me I felt like college was kind of a waste of time before getting into the real world of programming and building out real things and having people use them. I always felt like that would be a lot more exciting than the stuff we were doing. So, without further ado... So before I ended up going to college, I took quite a few AP classes that really helped me. Um, I highly recommend that you guys do the same if you can. Take AP classes, IB credits. I think you don't even really need to take the class to get credit. You just have to pass a test. If you're planning on going to college and you want to graduate quicker, maybe take some AP classes, IB classes beforehand. One thing I didn't do, which I wish I did, is I wish I'd taken more programming classes when I was in high school. If I'd taken like two programming classes, two basic ones, I feel like that would have set me up to really succeed in college right away. I think the very first intro level classes can be a little intimidating because of that, because you don't have nearly that much programming experience. So definitely do that. Um, in terms of AP classes that I got credit for, I had credit for chemistry, English, US history, calculus, and psychology. It ended up being a decent amount of credit, basically like a full quarter of credit, something like that. Really helpful, highly recommend. So first quarter, I joined as a freshman at Northwestern, and I took four classes. Four was like the number that you take. I know there's like credit hours and stuff, but it's basically the average that most people would take. And I pretty much just took whatever classes were recommended for me to take as a freshman engineering student, because there's only a few that you're really supposed to take. So I took design thinking and communication, which was like this design class where you try to build something. Didn't really get that much out of it, to be honest. We kind of made a really crappy design and nothing really happened, but I met some really cool people. Fundamentals of computer programming. This is one, one of those classes where you end up with, um, you do learn some programming, but you use a, like a garbage language that your professor makes you use. And I feel like it's not that helpful because the point of programming is that you want to build real projects. So... You know, I felt like this class was kind of a wash. I did fine in it. I, I feel like you really need to take a class with, like, a more mainstream language instead of one of these, like, really old languages that your professor makes because who's going to use a language like that? I know it's about the fundamentals. It's definitely about the fundamentals of programming. Like, you should learn the fundamentals of programming before you happen to dive into, like, deeper elements. But if you can't even practice the fundamentals because this language has no support on any you know, browser on any IDE, then how are you going to use it? You're not. So I took an honors calc engineering class. Definitely don't recommend. Yeah, uh, if you can avoid any of these honors classes, because they don't give you any extra credit. So you might as well just take the regular engineering class. Depends on what you're trying to aim for. If you're trying to learn a lot more about math. But I remember I spent so much time on this class that I could have spent on other classes, like learning more about programming and that would have been way more impactful for me. Again, it's all about your priorities. If you're trying to become a CS student, I highly recommend just focusing on sort of front-loading as many CS classes as you can initially, and then once you have that like idea of how programming works, keep on doing some CS classes and then slowly work into a couple basic classes. I feel like it makes more sense to take like one basic class with the CS classes as opposed to doing like a full slate of CS classes, because when you get up to the higher levels, it gets really intense. And I feel like it makes more sense to balance out your curriculum because the sooner you learn how to do some programming, the easier it will be for internships, for finding jobs, stuff like that. And another class, which is basically Intro to Linear Algebra with MATLAB programming. This one I did all right in. Then I got into winter quarter, took a couple different 
classes, a career development class, which was about like building a resume. I think it's important. Definitely make sure that you learn how to have a resume as soon as you can. I even when I was a freshman, I went to job fairs and stuff to get a sense of what would be needed. And my sense from all the programming people that I talked to, all the recruiters, was that projects were really important and that knowing what I knew about programming was more important. They didn't seem that like they cared at all about my grades. And now having gone to some of these recruiting things and done it myself, we don't care at all about your grades. Just really focus on being able to solve technical problems, being able to show off what projects you've worked on, and being able to pass our interviews. That's all that matters. I took um, Fundamentals of Computer Programming. Now this class, I think, was helpful. This class actually used a language that's usable, C++, um, and it was pretty hard. We had to build basically a functioning um, linear um, algebra calculator. And now, and when I look at it, I'm like, okay, that's, that's simple. I could probably do that in like a couple hours. But at the time, with no programming experience whatsoever, trying to do something like this was pretty difficult because I had to wrap my head around the ideas of like, you know, double arrays and trying to input in commands to the command line in order to get it to process. And it would have helped so much if I'd known just a little bit more beforehand. Just try to take some intro to programming classes as soon as you can. I'm happy I did it within my freshman year, but I think if I could do it again, I would take some in my high school years, especially some outside of my actual school, maybe some at a computer at a community college or some online classes, you know, just to have some basic understanding of programming. I took honors Calc Eng because I was a masochist and decided to continue it. Really, I was not sure if I was going to do CS or if I was going to do computer engineering. I ended up doing CS, so this class ended up becoming an unrestricted three elective. So, you know, kind of sucks, but I took a public speaking class because I decided it would be pretty easy, and then it was mandatory because the school just assumes that anyone that's an engineer has no public speaking <laughs> ability whatsoever, so we might as well teach them early. I took EA2, um, which was, come to think of it, I'm not entirely sure what it was. It was like physics. Again, not that useful to a CS degree. Like, most of my classes in my freshman year weren't so useful. Um, yeah, so spring quarter, I ended up taking Engineering Analysis 3. It was related to physics. It wasn't so important of a class. Data Structures and Project Management. This was a really cool class for me because I learned a little bit about data structures, but the issue was that the teacher wasn't so good, so I didn't feel like I learned a whole lot in the class. Design Thinking and Communication. This was a class about engineering principles, and it was not that useful for a CS major, so... But the really cool thing about this quarter was that I was able to use it to learn iOS programming. Basically, in my free time, I had been taking an online course from Stanford about iOS development, and that led me to learn so much more than any of the courses I was taking. This iOS course was super useful for me, and I highly recommend, if you guys have a chance, check out online courses and just try learning as much as you can from them. There's so much you can learn from them that you aren't taught in a traditional CS degree. 2014 fall, I took discrete math. This was really useful for understanding like Boolean logic, logical conditions. It wasn't as useful for actually programming, but it was still cool nonetheless. Intro to Computer Systems. This was a systems level class about everything from bits, hexadecimal, big endian, little endian architectures. It was really interesting. It's not as relevant as, say, software development, but it's super cool. Software Project Management. This is a course about developing an app or a website of your own choice. And it was really cool because we got to actually work on developing our own project and um, yeah it was cool we had our own business partners that would work with us on the technical side and we would build things out intro to statistics just a basic statistics class nothing much to be said I think statistics are really important in CS and um, especially for data engineering data scientists so the next quarter I took human computer interaction this was a course about the design of everyday things and trying to improve the human computer experience I didn't personally find it that useful because I felt like the course content was super easy and I didn't learn that much out of it. The next course I took was Intro to Graphics. And this graphics course was all in WebGL, which was really cool because it was super modern, it was in JavaScript, and you could build it on your browser. So it was really cool to see these 3D worlds that we were basically building with computer graphics. The next course I took was Massively Parallel Programming with CUDA. It was super intimidating for a title, but the course itself wasn't too bad. It was just basically 
building out parallel systems and implementing them using a language called CUDA, which was basically just a framework on top of C. And it was really cool because I got to see how to actually parallelize systems, how you can make processing go a lot faster. I took a vocal class because I wanted to get a little bit more credit. I wanted to graduate within three years, so it was important to take these sort of half credit classes. And then I took general physics. This physics class was just a basic science requirement. The next quarter, I ended up taking intro to photography, which was really cool. It taught me a lot about photographic sense. I ended up taking it, and it was uh, all about film photography, which I didn't expect. But it really taught me about composing my subjects, and I also learned about how to develop film. Um, and film is more of a medium, so it was cool. I took machine learning, which was a really cool class, highly relevant in this day and age. It was basically about building out machine learning algorithms as well as using them to evaluate some data sets. So we ended up building out a decision tree, we ended up learning a lot about nearest neighbor, a lot of these other types of algorithms, and in the end we ended up building a machine learning bot for the NCAA March Madness. And it was really cool. We ended up using features like point differential, points per game, rebounds, assists, and we would predict the full bracket, basically comparing if two teams would win or not. Then I ended up taking special topics in EECS. This was computational photography. It was a cool research class. It was pretty easy. It was just reading papers and then talking about them. And at the very end, we had to implement a final project, which was, for me, I just built a panorama image stitching app on a uh, mobile phone, on the iOS specifically. It was really cool. It taught me a lot about mobile programming, interacting between Objective-C to C++, and I learned a lot about photography that way, too. Then I ended up taking a Polish for Native Speakers class. This was a pretty easy class. It was like an unrestricted elective, but it was a good chance to meet other people, and uh, it was pretty fun, actually. And then in the fall, I ended up taking an Earth class, basic science class requirement. I ended up taking Design and Analysis of Algorithms. This class was really important. I learned a lot about different types of algorithms. I learned greedy algorithms, dynamic programming, NP-hard, NP-complete problems. I think it's really important that you take an algorithms course whenever you're in college, whenever you have an opportunity, because it teaches you a lot. For me, it was really useful even when I was interviewing at companies in the Bay Area. For example, I had a problem for dynamic programming, and it was like this four-dimensional dynamic programming problem, and without this course, I would never been able to solve it, but I was able to get to most of the finer details and ended up getting an offer from that company. Special Topics in EECS, this was another special project-based course. Then I took a voice class, again, for an unrestricted elective. Then I took Intro to Material Science, this was a basic elective class. I don't really remember that much about it, again, it wasn't that relevant to my major. Winter quarter, I ended up taking Computer System Software, which was a basic engineering requirement class and it was about building things in assembly. It was really cool. I got the opportunity to build a game in assembly and then we had like a pizza party at the very end. So it was an awesome professor, awesome class. Intro to computer vision. This was basically a class about computer vision algorithms and how to apply them. For me, I really liked the project but I never went to class. I went to class twice. And the reason is that I don't think you should go to class if it's not worth your time. If you think the professor is a bad lecturer, if you don't get that much out of the actual lecture class, just don't go. It's better to spend your time on projects and trying to learn, especially in CS. Then I took a research class, so I was working with a professor to analyze some data that we had about pills and how to identify different pills. It was a really cool opportunity to actually use some of that machine learning experience that I got and apply it to a real setting. Then I had a class, Statistical Pattern Recognition. This was a lecture-based class that was pretty similar to sort of machine learning models, so it was pretty easy for me. At the end, we had a small project, and we ended up trying to implement it, and it wasn't that bad. Then I took IEMS, which was Industrial Engineering, and it was about statistical models and optimizations, how to make maximization problems, minimization problems, and how to solve them. It was a really good class, highly recommend. And I took a vocal class, this was just an unrestricted elective. Then my spring quarter, which was my last quarter at college, I ended up taking Earth 201, which is another Earth class. It was a basic science requirement, I just wanted to get my basic sciences done, and so I could graduate. I took Intro to AI, I needed a basic AI requirement, and this was the course that would fulfill it. It was pretty easy for me, since I'd already taken so many CS classes at this point. Intro to Parallel Computing, this was a really good class. I learned a lot from my earlier parallel programming class, and this class was really good. The professor was awesome, we learned so much, I loved it. 
X395. This was another project-based course. It was basically trying to work with the intersection of media and technology. So we was mostly working with politics in our case. So we would analyze things about the election that was coming up. Then a 399 course. It was a project-based course where I would hook a mobile app up to a Bluetooth wearable headset and track some people's vital health statistics. It turned out to be quite difficult because I don't think there's a super easy way to do it in iOS. I did fine in class. And then I took another vocal class basically for an unrestricted elective. And then in the summer I had one more class to do so I ended up working for a startup. While I was working for the startup I just took this class at a community college online and then I just transferred it over to my college and it was uh, intro to macroeconomics. It was really easy, nothing much to be said. The takeaways I want to give are that the professor matters in the course. Like if you have a really good professor, you're going to do a lot, you're going to learn a lot more in the course. Mm. The ratings matter. If you can find ratings for a specific class or hear from other people out of the classes, those are useful information for you to figure out if it's worth your while. And the course content matters. If you're trying to learn something, you want to learn as much as you can. So I would keep that in mind. And another advice I have is just try to learn how to do some programming before you end up going to college, before you end up taking these intro computer classes in college. It'll help make the transition a lot easier. I always found the hardest part is starting. It's not like keeping on going, it's the, the beginning that's the most challenging. And that'll do it for me. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please leave a like and a subscribe if you like this video. And thank you guys so much.